Okay, so just a little safety warning at the start of this video. Uh, this may stop your Compute Module 4 from working. I don't think it was what I was doing that made it stop working, but uh, nonetheless, I can't get it to work anymore. Anyway, I'll show the video that I recorded and uh, I'll come in after the bit where it goes wrong. Okay, so I've been playing around with the Compute Module 4. Uh, this is my Compute Module 4, which is a 32 gig EMMC model. Uh, I've got a couple of carrier boards. I've got the Seed Studio one here, which is USB 3 and the USB 2 one here from Big Tree Tech, which is attached to a five inch screen. And uh, right from the start of having a Compute Module 4, I tried to get it to USB boot and I didn't manage it. I have managed it with Berry boot, but you still need uh, to write Berry boot to the EMMC storage of the Compute Module 4. But I've worked out a way of getting USB boot, or in fact SD card working on everything, as far as I can see. So let's show you how I've done it. So if you have a Compute Module 4 that doesn't have its own storage, you'll basically use it a bit like a Raspberry Pi 4 where you'll flash the operating system to a USB stick or an SD card, put it in and it will boot from that. But the EMMC drive Compute Module 4s work differently and they will always try and boot from the operating system on the EMMC drive, even if you've got an SD card in and it's not the same to change the boot order as it is on a Pi 4 or a 400. So if you flashed a operating system to your EMMC drive on a Compute Module 4, you'll have already done the correct method. Jeff Gilling's got a very good blog on it and the instructions are in there. Now I've done that in previous videos, so I can go straight to terminal, I can do CD USB boot, and I can do sudo Raspberry Pi boot. So you can see it's been detected, so now I can read and write to that drive. Now if I go into Raspberry Pi Imager, just click on that, and choose OS. I'm just going to go down to arrays, choose storage, you can see this is my EMMC drive, click on that and hit write and yes and then continue. So now what you need to do is put your Raspberry Pi into ordinary boot mode and that depends on what carrier board you've got. On mine I've got a couple of little switches uh, on my Seed Studio one I've got a cable that braces between two different pins so put it into normal boot mode and now try and boot it without an operating system in it. See what happens. So I've plugged my HDMI cable in, mouse and keyboard and power. Let's see what happens. So it tries to boot but it fails to boot because we've got no OS on the MMC drive. So what it does is goes into the same sort of boot menu as you get on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now I've got an old version of Buster on this SD card. Uh, I've just put it into a little USB SD card reader. So if I plug this into any of these USB sockets and then go back onto the screen, you'll see that it starts to boot up in the normal way. There you go, so that's booted up and it's working as it should and it's even recognized the Wi-Fi from when it was connected to my Pi 4 in the past. Uh, it's reading the temperature in the same way, so everything's working exactly as it should. So let's try another OS, let's shut this down. I tried putting an SD card in just to test it and uh, it's still not booting so it only seems to work with this method when you use an SD card reader so let's use that. This time I'm using a different USB reader and I've got Ubuntu Mate on the SD card that's in there. So oh, it's read it straight away, yeah very very quick. So Ubuntu Mate didn't work, it just stuck on a, uh, a dark screen. This is Supreme RetroPie uh, version 1.1, I think this is, and uh, you can see that it's all loaded up and it's working. This is an SD card in the SD card reader, so we're going to Games and Mugen. And that seems to be working fine with sound coming from the HDMI. How about Ubuntu running from an SSD drive going via USB? Nope, Ubuntu didn't boot up either, which is the same as Ubuntu Mate was, which is not surprising, I guess. But uh, I have had success with Phoenix Linux, which is great news because this is a really nice OS with uh, really good YouTube performance. Yeah, really nice to see 1080 YouTube running so well on a Pi Compute Module 4. I thought Windows 11 was going to boot from my M.2 drive, but it's stuck in a boot loop. However, Pop! OS boots absolutely fine and everything is running fine from my M.2 drive. It feels pretty snappy considering it's still on USB 2. Pi Amiga 2 is working fine from an SD card in an SD card reader. All the games seem to be launching fine. 
So I've just switched over carrier boards uh, to give a test on this one, which is the one from Seed Studio. Uh, and this supports two USB 3 ports, so I was expecting to get better results. But if I turn it on, unfortunately it just comes up with no signal on the monitor and it doesn't go into that boot menu. I've tried booting it up with an SSD drive, I've tried booting it up with an SD card in the SD card reader and nothing happens. I don't get any display from this at all unless I've got an operating system written to the EMMC drive. So it's weird. Different carrier boards, I mean obviously they are different, but I was expecting them to behave probably the same. Uh, but the big tree one with the screen, uh, that actually does let me do this little hack where you can uh, boot straight from USB as long as you've got nothing on the EMMC drive. It'd be interesting to see what happens when I get a Compute Module 4 which doesn't have an EMMC drive on it and see if that boots in this particular board. I expect it would, um, but uh, somehow it's treating it differently to this board. So let me know in the comments if you try this and you've got a different carrier board and if yours works with this little hack. Okay, so at that point it seemed to have gone wrong. So uh, putting it in this board and trying to get it to USB boot didn't work and I've used this board and I've taken the compute module 4 out of it and put it back in again and tried it and everything had been fine um, but now this board doesn't work in either of my carrier boards in fact I've got a third carrier board that it doesn't work with as well and uh, so it's just not detected I've got three different USB-C cables that I know work as data cables and none of them work uh, none of the carrier boards work it just doesn't recognize it and weirdly as well the USB boot that was working before in the other board doesn't work anymore. And I did find in the official Raspberry Pi documentations uh, this bit here. The Compute Module 4 ROM never runs recovery.bin from SD EMMC and the Raspberry Pi EEPROM update service is not enabled by default. This is necessary because the EMMC is not removable and an invalid recovery.bin file would prevent the system from booting. And this is the bit that I find interesting. This can be overridden and used with a self-update mode where the bootloader can be updated from USB, MSD or network boot. However, self-update mode is not an automatic update and therefore not safe in the event of a power failure whilst the EEPROM was updated. So I was trying to find a self-update file. Um, so a bit like you can flash the EEPROM on a Raspberry Pi 4, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So if anybody knows how to do this, uh, I'd appreciate it, but uh, I'll keep trying with it. I have got another Compute Module 4 on back order because I wanted to try one without the EMMC drive anyway and I'd ordered that before this one stopped working because a nice usable handheld is becoming more of a reality. This is the Big Tree Tech case that I printed out. This is 3D printed Ooh. and uh, it's actually all right. Uh, it's got all the spaces for all the uh, controls and everything on it. It did go a bit wrong in my 3D printer printing out the back uh, and it seemed to somehow do an extra layer um, but it was off center. So I've tidied it up with some knives and things like that, but um, I could probably do with printing out the back again. But yeah, this is pretty cool. It's a nice size. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.